Hey everybody on YouTube, today I thought I'd take out another moment to do another vintage broadcast repair. Uh, today I got another unit here on my table, it's a Umatic three-quarter machine. This is a Sony model, but it's only a player, it's not a recorder. But these were pretty prevalent at the cable access studios. Some TV stations had them during the late 90s and late 80s. Uh, they were pretty prevalent for playing back three-quarter Umatic tapes. What you're looking at here is a Sony uh, model V's and Victor, P's and Paul 720. This thing is suffering from severe, severe aging, uh, from sitting, from not being used. Uh, I had a customer bring me this, or he actually shipped me this unit. This thing has a ton of problems. So, like I keep mentioning to everybody on YouTube and various places, I do a lot of vintage video re repair and uh, transfers. But this is uh, quite a unique model because of the fact I just got this the other day by UPS. The guy saw my, U uh, my YouTube videos on repair and he wanted me to repair this machine for him. But it can be very expensive if you have a lot of issues. Uh, this particular uh, machine has, oh God, several issues. I had to replace all the rubber on this, on this machine, the clutch tires, the belts, the Capistan rollers, and other loading uh, belts and various other things. But the most unique thing about repairing this machine, and it's a very common problem with this player. I've worked on this machine many times. I think I've had, oh my God, I must have had 10 of this model in, in the past 10 years, at least 10 of this very same model. And they all have the same problem. It's a very cheap machine. It's not, uh, the quality of the machine isn't as good as some of the older three-quarter Umatic machines. Uh, they slimmed them down. Uh, they did improve the video by putting a time-based correction card on it, which is kind of a plus. But then they actually made the machine much cheaper. Uh, the mechanisms are very cheap. Uh, they started using many more springs to make connections for various mechanisms. And the springs would start to stretch or get, you know, kind of wore out and certain mechanisms wouldn't work. And replacement springs for these machines are kind of hard to get. So there's a lot of factors in fixing Umatic and Betacam SP machines. They're very similar, but you got to keep in mind, you got to have a lot of replacement parts. This particular machine had a severe Capistan motor problem. Here's an actual picture of it if you, if you take a look. This is the Capistan motor for this Umatic machine. The actual IC circuit on this motor is actually shorted out. And this thing would go and play and start eating tapes and just physically stopping. But this man's very lucky because I happen to have an extra Capistan motor, replacement motor for this particular machine. So I was able to fix the problem. So you do have to have a lot of parts if you're working on vintage three-quarter and broadcast machines. Because these things take a lot of repair parts. The belts, the guides, the rubber parts, uh, sometimes... Uh, you know, electronic card replacements. Sometimes you have to fix the, the electronic cards if they got cracks in the boards or you got to replace the capacitors on the entire machine. A lot of these newer machines, you don't have to really worry about changing out capacitors because it, it usually affects only machines that's like 40 years old, like the reel-to-reel -reel video machines and open one-inch machines and quad machines. Those machines are so old and heavy use that the capacitors would dry up and from machines being in storage. So, you know, recapping those machines you usually have to do. But a lot of these broadcast decks, you know, the Umatic machines, the three-quarter machines, and various other newer decks from the late 80s and 90s, you don't have to really worry about recapping the whole machine. If you do have to recap the machine, it'd probably be just a general area of caps you have to change out, not the whole machine. So I wanted to point that out too. A lot of people ask me, do you have to recap every machine you work on? No, you do not. Only old, old uh, machines you need to recap, not ones that are later in the 90s and 80s because the capacitors were meant to hold out a lot longer at that particular time. So if you have older, older VCRs from like 40 years old, yeah, it's recommended to recap them. Also, I had to fix the loading carriage on this nightmare. This loading carriage had, um, had to be realigned. The circuit board had to be fixed. I had to put a brand new belt on it. This thing was really screwed up. I did not have an extra loading carriage for this machine, so I had to make do with the loading carriage that came with the machine and I had to do a lot of extra work to correct the problem. But as you can see, the loading carriage is now fixed. But this was a very unique machine to fix. 
And uh, I just wanted to point out, if you have a VP720 or 7020, Umatic player, yeah, rep, rep, uh, repairing this machine does take a lot of extra work. It, it's it's very cheap machine. They kind of downsized everything on it, and you have to do, you have to virtually replace everything on the machine. So, you know, if you have any questions about this particular repair or, or any particular issues, send me an email, and I hope you enjoyed this video.